guys, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. All right, we have uh, some Bachelor Nation updates, and this one's wild because, whoa! It's not the first time there's been an issue with legal issues, I guess, with the Bachelor franchise, but this one is a doozy. It is all about Cassie Randolph and Colton Underwood. They were on season 23 of The Bachelor and had been together ever since the finale. They actually were, the finale was in March of 2019, um, and they appeared to be all things of a happy couple. Now, they announced that they split up back in May. A source at the time said of the split said that this was a long time coming because they had been sort of a, they were good friends, they had been hot and heavy at one point, but they just make better friends than they did partners. And they said that it was, they were pretty much roommates towards the end of their relationship. Now, the decision to split was apparently not easy for either of them. Um, in fact, they said breaking up was not easy decision for Colton and Cassie, but they believe it was the right decision at the end of the day. It was not something that they did lightly. They had a number of conversations about their future. And they didn't initially say anything. Colton's 28, Cassie, or Cassie's 25. Um, and um, his first discussion of it he said it's been a crazy few months to say the least cassie and i have been doing a lot of self-reflecting sometimes people are just not meant are just meant to be friends and that's okay we both have grown immensely and have been through so much together so this isn't the end of our story it's the start of a whole new chapter for us and cassie wrote her response which said first off i just want to say that this is one of the hardest things i've ever had to share as neither of us is quite ready to talk about it however because our relationship is such a public one our silence on the matter has been speaking for us. Colton and I have broke up, but we have decided to remain a part of each other's lives. With all that we have gone through, we have a special bond that we'll always be there. I love him very much and have enormous amount of respect for him. And we have learned and we've grown so much the past couple of years. They were a poor, trying to be amicable. Now, apparently things got a little bit heated in July with some Instagramming and According to a court document that was filed in LA Superior Court and actually picked up by the Hollywood Life, she filed for a restraining order and was actually granted one. And this is really wild, you guys. He was putting a tracking device on her car. He was using alias accounts to text message her and he was sitting outside of her house at different points in the night. Okay, weird. So one of the first things on this, it says that on June 27th, Miss Randolph was visiting her family in Huntington Beach, California, and he was seen, Mr. Underwood was seen outside the residence. Both Mr. Underwood and Miss Randolph live in Los Angeles. His brother and two of his friends saw Mr. Underwood in the alley outside of the Randolph's bedroom window at two in the morning. When he was confronted, Mr. Underwood sent harassing text messages to Miss Randolph, Miss Randolph's best friend, Linda Solis. And wow, they've, yeah. Since then, Mr. Underwood has been seen by Miss Randolph's family, neighbors, and his friends of the family hanging around her home. So he's not doing well with the split. He seemingly is keeping an eye on her. Now, Sitting outside your window at two in the morning, you guys, that's so creepy. So anyways, it goes on to say that Mr. Underwood also watches Miss Randolph's apartment. So he's a, Mr. Underwood has admitted to his roommates and his roommate's girlfriend, who he goes on multiple walks a day past her apartment building. And, and Miss Randolph and several of her friends have seen him around the apartment from the balcony. They say that on July 27th, Miss Randolph's friends, uh, Kaylin visited her and Mr. Underwood somehow immediately knew and obsessively called and sent text messages to her. So he must have been like outside, saw the guy walking in and he was like, not okay with that. And they had exhibits for that they included there. Um, but they said that he had known he was come. He, she says Miss Randolph was startled that he knew who was coming in out in and out of the apartment and felt like she was being watched. <laughs> Sounds like it. 
A few days later, Mr. Underwood showed up again at her apartment, still upset again about this visit from a few days prior. And then he proceeded to yell at her and threatened, I'm going to keep you accountable. Yikes. Mr. Underwood continued to repeatedly call and send text messages on the, sub on the subject in subsequent days. Wow. This guy sounds unstable. This is scary. Can you imagine going through this if this is all true? And she has evidence. She says that between August 16th and August 19th, at some point, he also used an alias phone number to anonymously send harassing text messages at all hours of the day to her phone and her friends. Mr. Underwood also sent text messages to himself pretending to be a... Oh my gosh. Colton, this sounds seriously intense. Mr. Underwood had conversations with numerous mutual friends and work colleagues about the disturbing messages he was purportedly receiving. So he's pretending he was getting them too. He later to, admitted to being the one that was sending the messages. She also says that he has been tracking her. So, whoa. So she gets an anonymous text from an alias phone number that made statements demonstrating that someone was tracking her. For example, she received the following messages when she was visiting family in Huntington Beach. You like playing games, huh? Let's play some games then. Let's just say we used to be family, friends, be young, have your good time. You'll have nothing but regrets later with you, with how you treat people. And then the next message she got as totally seems like you're growing up, LOLs. Living in home still? Whoa. In addition, she says that she was at a friend's house and she received a message that said, say hi to B for me and with the kissy face emoji. And then on August 19th, due to all of these messages and evidence that she was being like tracked to multiple places, her she and her family thought that someone might be tracking her and decided to check her car for a tracker and they discovered a tile tracking device taped to the bottom back bumper of her car. The discovery of the device was shocking and caused Miss Randolph severe distress and was immediately became concerned about this person. Fearful for her safety, she contacted the police and a private investigator to help figure out who had placed the tracking device on her car and was sending messages stalking her whereabouts. Two days later, on August 21st, Miss Randolph confronted Mr. Underwood and she told him that she was scared and that she was enlisting the help of a professional to track down her stalker. Mr. Underwood admitted that he was the one who put the tracker on her car and had been sending her the text messages and her friends and himself under the alias phone numbers described above. Oh my God. God. He then went to Denver to spend time with his family and he told Miss Randolph that he was returning to Los Angeles in a few weeks. In Denver, he admitted to a few mutual friends and co-workers that he placed the tracker on her car, used the alias phone numbers to send the anonymous messages himself and others because of the history of this behavior, which has escalated from harassing to obsessive calls and messages to obsessive walks to the apartment complex to loitering outside of the window of my parents' house in the morning to place a tracking device and escalation in his conduct to just before leaving for Denver, Miss Randolph fears for her safety and the safety of her family. Whoa, you guys, this is some serious stuff. This is obsession, yikes. And the scary thing is, is they met on a reality show and he seemingly didn't have any known issues, but this is like a humongous issue here. And she was granted this temporary restraining order, which will actually be good until October 6th. And then they will go to court where he will either have to defend it and say, I didn't do these things and it's not a big deal. Or, and she will then have to like provide her evidence and he'll have to defend himself against the evidence. But that must have been absolutely terrifying for her. I can't imagine going through that. And she provided evidence of different text message exchanges and it's, this sounds so awful. 
in one of the text messages that he sent to her in the screenshots, he said, because you're a sick, selfish person who isn't ready to be loved, I spent two years loving you the best I could and now I'm sitting here feeling like a fool. You've hurt me beyond words. I've always done nothing but be there for you and still, you still disrespect me all the time. Like, you're not together. You have to move on, Colton. This isn't healthy. This is so disturbing. And this is like, the problem is like, I, oh man, I always feel like these shows that do these love shows, there's always like that hidden risk like this. And this poor girl, I, if this is true, I hope they get the two year restraining order here. I really, really hope that this is not like, she doesn't have any more issues. This is scary. Behavior like this can automatically escalate. As you can see, I mean, he could end up hurting her. So if you watched season 23 and you were a fan of Colton and Cassie, can you tell me what your thoughts are with this latest development? Because this is wild. I will be back later with more. Bye, guys.